Technology video lectures. For this week, we will be dealing with Module 2, the introduction to our nematodes and the ascaris. Reminders before you start watching the video lecture number 1, please do take down notes. A PDF copy of the presentation has been added to your smart kit already. Second, listen attentively, avoid unnecessary distractions. Third, give extra attention. The information marked with a star because again, it may be a recall question in the board exam. And since parasitology is one of the board exam subjects, definitely there will be numerous uh, information here marked with the star. So here are our learning objectives for today. Number one, describe the general characteristics of our nematodes. Explain the general pathophysiology, the life cycle, infective stages, modes of transmission, prevention and control of the common nematodes. Third is discuss the morphology, life cycle, infective stages, mode of transmission, prevention and control, treatment and diagnostic test for the Ascaris lumbricoides. Okay, so let's start. Classification of parasites of medical importance. So here in parasitology, right, ang pinaka main concern natin, right, is our parasite. And parasites is actually uh, parang divided into many different categories. So parasites, we have here the protozoas. Then under protozoa, we have the sarcodinas or the amoebas, the sporozoa or the sporozoans, mastigophora, which is the flagellates, and ciliata, which are the ciliates. But for now, dito po tayo mag-focus in period 1. Yung metazoa, helminths, specifically po yung ne nema helminths na yan, which is your roundworms. Yun po yung nematodes, okay? Yung mahabang name na to, this is actually also the nematodes. Nematodes are also known as your roundworms. Also under metazoa, we have the platy helminths or the flatworms. And under flatworms, it is also subdivided as well into the trematoda or the flux and the cestoda or our tapeworm. But then again, ang um, period 1 po mainly focuses on the roundworms po or the nematodes. So typical features of our roundworms. So again ha, the other name po ng ating mga nematodes is our roundworm. So yun yung parang common name niya, roundworm. It is actually known as roundworms because of its structure kasi parang po yung kanyang structure pa below. Adult roundworms are typically cylindrical uh, yung kanyang shape. So cylindrical is pa below. Kaya nga po roundworms ang tawag sa kanya. Somehow it is the elongated din po sila. Mahahaba sila. Katulad po nga nito. Di ba? Mahabang worm to. Also, mostly bilateral bilaterally symmetrical. Mama no pong ibig sabihin, pag sinabi natin na ang isang parasite ay bilater bilaterally symmetrical. Ibig sabihin na ito, class, is kunwari itong worm na to, hinati nyo siya sa gitna. Yung hinati nyo, either left or right, iisa po yung structure niya. I repeat, pag sinabi po natin, bilaterally symmetrical, kapag po itong worm na to, hinati nyo siya sa gitna, dapat yung itsura po nung nasa kaliwa at sa kanan na side, same. Okay, so mostly, the roundworms are bilaterally symmetrical po. Same po yan kapag hinati nyo. Dapat kung anong structure yung nakikita nyo doon sa right side ni worm, dapat sa left side nya rin is ganun din po yung mga present na structures. Also, adult roundworms are typically non-segmented. Pag sinabi pong non-segmented, ibig sabihin diretso lang po yung kanyang katawan. Wala siya yung parang hati-hati. Kung naiisip nyo, class, yung parang caterpillar. Di ba ang caterpillar, yung katawan niya, para siyang may hati-hati na pabilog? So, ito pong mga roundworms na to, wala siyang mga hati na ganun or mga segments. Most roundworms are non-segmented. Next, adult roundworms possess specialized anterior. Anterior po yung upper side ng kanyang body, capable of causing abrasion, inducing attachment, and initiating sensory response. This may include any of the following. So, yung uh, anterior part daw po ng ating roundworms or yung nasa taas na body niya, it can have specialized structures such as nga po a lips, yung ibang uh, mga roundworms natin may plates, merong hooks, may papillae, and merong also teeth. 
Kaya po yung mga roundworms natin minsan is kaya mag-attach sa ating mga intestine, sa gastrointestinal tract, etc. is because of the presence of these specialized anterior structures. Also, with regards to the uh, system, mga digestive, nervous system, excretory, reproductive, and ayun, So, ito yung mga systems na typically present po sa ating mga roundworms. So, for the digestive system, the adult worm has a complete digestive tract. O, diba, imagine nyo, yung simpleng uod, may kompletong digestive tract po sila. It is a simple tube extending from the mouth, so, sumala sa bibig, down to the anus, or yung sa puwet po, which opens on the ventral surface in a short distance from the posterior extremity. The digestive system includes the following so your mouth sa i mean sa worm meron silang mouth located at the anterior end so anterior end is yung nasa taas nga pong body katulad din sa human's lip right ang ating mouth is present in the anterior portion of our body so nasa taas also buccal cavity which is a tubular or funnel shape na parang structure ng ating worm We also have the esophagus. O, di ba? Mga simpleng worms lang na yan. May mga esophagus yan. Uh, the esophagus is a muscular tube that pumps food posteriorly into the intestines of our worms. Specifically, our round worms. Then, there are many numerous different types of esophagus such as a filiform, raptitiform, strongiform, etc. These are just the most common. Also, the digestive system of adult uh, roundworms has intestines or midgut. This is a flattened tube with a wide lumen that follows a straight course from the esophagus down to the rectum. So, di ba, ang pagkakaiba po ng ating worms sa humans, of course, aside sa mga humans, very complex ang ating digestive system. Dito po kasi kay uh, digestive system ng mga typical roundworms natin is wala siyang stomach. Okay, so from the esophagus, diretso po yan agad sa intestine. Ganun po yung simple structures ng ating mga round birds. Also, yung rectum, yung sa puwet nga ako sa lalabas, yung kung ano man. And in female, the intestine leads into a short uh, rectum lined with cuticle. And in male worms, it joins with the genital duct to form a common cloaca which opens through the anus. What about the nervous system of our roundworms? The nervous system consists of a dorsal, a ventral, and four lateral longitudinal trunks with transverse commissures. The excretory system of the typical roundworms consists of two lateral canals that lie in the lateral longitudinal cords of the hypodermis. Also, ito very vital po itong reproductive system in a parasite. Kasi paano sila magpapadami kung walang reproductive system? So, the reproductive system of the typical roundworms, the male reproductive organs are situated in the posterior third of the body as a single coiled or convoluted tube, the various parts of which are differentiated as testis, vas deferens, seminal vesicle, and ejaculatory duct. So, di ba typical, mga simpleng worms lang, but kompleto po itong mga organs na ito for reproduction. And also, our uh, roundworms typically produces ovum or ova. Ang ova po is actually another term for eggs. So, egg lay. Naglilay po ng eggs ito mga worm natin. Positive. The daily output of a gravid female may range from 22 to 100,000 eggs. The eggs consist of a multinucleated mass of protoplasm usually containing yolk gland. So, imagine just one gravid female na worm, typical round worm, can lay up to 20 to 200,000 eggs daily. So, imagine, no, isa lang. Kayang-kaya niyang i-infect ang isang tao ng sobrang daming uh, bulate because ang daily output niya nga is 20,000 to 200,000 eggs. Eh, what if lahat yun mag-hatch? <laughs> you know? In a perfect scenario, lahat nag-hatch. O, sige, So, 200,000 na yung present sa'yo na uod sa loob ng katawan mo ngayon. Diba? But, yun po yung pinaka-general na nangyayari. Okay, so ito, next slide here you are seeing right now is yung pinaka-structure po ng mga pinag-usapan natin kanina, like the digestive system, reproductive, etc. So, tingnan natin kung nasaan po siya dun sa ating worm. 
So, dun tayo kay digestive system. So, ito yung mouth. Ito po yung anterior portion. Dito yung mouth. May pharynx. Di ba ito? May intestine siya. Then, cuticle. Pwede rin. Then, dorsal nerve. Ventral nerve. The testis of the roundworm and yung kanyang anus. So, dito lalabas yung mga excretory products. So, ganito daw po ang itsura ng ang tawag dito. Heterodera glycines na nematode under the electron microscope. Ito po siya. And then, ito po ay isang type of ova or egg. Okay, another general characteristic of the typical roundworms or nematode or adult worms are non-hermaphroditic, meaning it contains separate sexes. I repeat, Ano nga daw pong ibig sabihin kapag sinabi natin na ang mga nematodes are non-hermaphroditic, it means they have separate sexes. They have both male and females. Okay? Because not all worms po, especially dun sa mga cestodes, trematodes, are non-hermaphroditic or merong male and female. Minsan po kasi may mga worms tayo na kaya niya mag-reproduce mag-isa. Hindi niya kailangan ng, baba, ng lalaki. Okay? So, ito po mga nematodes natin actually needs two. So, male and female are both present for the adult worms ng ating nematodes. Again, that is termed as non-hermaphroditic. Males are generally smaller compared to females. So, kung ito po, i-compare natin yung sizes po nila. Ang mga male nematode po is commonly smaller. Ito, ito sila oh. Mas maliit po sila in comparison with our female nematodes. And males usually have a, a curved posterior end. What does that mean, ma'am? So, ito po ang posterior end. So, naka-curve siya. Para siyang naka-curve. At again, mas maliit po ang ating mga male. And also, yung mga female po natin typically has yung pointed lang po yung kanilang posterior end. Di ba ganyan lang? Unlike sa ating mga male na worm, makikita niyo po talaga na ang kanilang uh, itsura is parang curve po yung dulo nila. Ayan, no? naka-curve. And the typical life cycle of our nematodes, madali lang po madalas ang life cycle ng mga nematodes natin. Madalas ganito lang siya, from the eggs or the ova, nagiging larva sila, then magiging adult sila. And then the cycle just repeats. That is the general life cycle of all nematodes. Okay? Simple lang. Egg, larva, adult, egg, larva, adult, repeat. Ganon po yung typical life cycle ng ating mga nematodes. No worries, iisa-isahin po natin yan as the semester goes along. The adults of intestinal nematodes may be found in the small intestine and then the large intestine. I repeat, adults of intestinal nematodes may be found in the small intestine and large intestine. There are specific organisms po or species po ng ating mga nematodes na matatagpuan lang sa small intestine. Meron din po sa large intestine, but they're also extra intestinal. Okay, so let's start with the small intestine first. For the small intestine, please remember ash CT. What are again the adults uh, or the adult nematodes that can be found in the small intestine? Again, that is ash CT. Again, small intestine, ash CT. At ano nga po yung ash CT na yan? Letter A for ascaris. Letter S for strong eloides. H is hookworm. C is capillaria. And T is trichinella. I repeat. The adults of the following nematodes can be found in the small intestine. Ash CT. A for ascaris, S for strong eloides, H for hookworm, C capillaria, T is trichinella. Okay, so yan po yung mga specific nematodes natin that can be found in the small intestine. Yung adults po nila. Next, what are the adult nematodes that can be found in the large intestine? For the large intestine, please remember ET. Large intestine, ET. E for enterobius, T for trichuris. I repeat, adults of 
of the following intestinal nematodes can be found in the large intestine. Please remember ET. E for enterobius and T for trichuris. Please wag pong ipag-interchange ang trichinella at si trichuris ha. Kasi po ang again small intestine, adult po trichinella. Large intestine is trichuris. Oh, they are not interchange. They should not be interchanged po. Magkaiba pong parasite si trichinella at si trichuris. Okay? Baka kasi malito kayo eh. Letter T kasi sila pa rin. So, basta tandaan nyo, ang adults po ng ating trichinella can be found in the small intestine. And then, si trichuris po again is nasa large intestine. Also, the adult of the following uh, parasites or nematodes can be found extra intestinal. So, wala sila sa intestine. Nandito po sila. For the trichinella spiralis, same po ito. Si trichinella na ito at saka si trichinella spiralis. Ito kasi yung whole name niya. Yung trichinella spiralis. But, please do take note that the trichinella spiralis larva, yung larva niya po, larva only can be found in our moss. Okay? So, again, very uh, known parasite po ito na natatagpuan sa muscle natin. Again, the larva of trichinella spiralis can be found in the muscle. But please, again, do take note. Recall question po yan. The adults of trichinella spiralis can be found in the small intestine. Hindi po sa muscle. Okay? Yung mga students po kasi, kapag na-discuss na natin si trichinella spiralis, magigets nyo yung point ko. But most of the students kasi, ang ginagawa nila, pag nakabasa sila ng trichinella spiralis, sa muscle agad yung sinasagot nila. But then again, please do take note that the uh, stage of trichinella spiralis that can be found in your muscle is the larval stage only. Okay? Pag tinanong po sa inyo, adults of trichinella spiralis can be found in, sagot po dyan, is small intestine. Paki take note po, recall question po yan. Nakakalito. But kung iisipin, madali lang yung question. Nalito lang kasi... Ang ginagawa nga madalas ng mga estudyante pag nakabasa ng trichinella spiralis, muscle sila agad. But again, take note po natin na ang matatagpuan nyo pong trichinella spiralis sa muscle nyo is yung larval stage nyo lang. Also, filarial worms. The, your uh, filarial worms can be found in the lymphatic and the tissue. And letter D, that is Dracunculus metinensis can be found in your tissue as well. And angiostrongylus cantonensis can be found in the brain. Development of nematodes or its life cycle. Parasitic nematodes have either a simple or complex life cycle both within and outside the body of a host. So, ang ating mga nematodes class, madalas po, simple lang yung kanyang life cycle. But of course, Meron po tayo mga exception to the rule, merong mga complex yung life cycle nila, but definitely they follow the same process. Nematodes have five, sorry. Nematodes have five successful fundamental stages, four larval stage and the adult. So ganito po. And may sinabi pa dito with growth in a month of cuticle or ecdysis between two stages. Okay, so the typical life cycle of our nematodes ganito lang siya. Adult. Yung adult, male and female, can have a sexual contact. Mga worms to, ha? Adult, male and female, can have a something that they do. Ayan. And then, magpaproduce po si female ngayon ng ating egg. Okay? And then, si, once the adult produces the egg, after the egg or the ova, the next na stage nyan, mangyayari is juvenile one. Yung juvenile po, ibig sabihin bata. Yun yung larval stage, okay? So, from the juvenile 1, magkakaroon ng molting, papunta sa juvenile 2, molting ulit, juvenile 3. So, kumbaga ha, again, yung juvenile po, ibig sabihin bata or the larval stages, okay? Then, after the third level, magmumult siya ulit, papunta sa juvenile 4, then, magmumult ulit, pabalik sa ating adults. And then, once sa adults sila, magsisex ulit yan para magproduce ng ating eggs. Or ova, and then the cycle just repeat. That is the basic life cycle of all ne known nematodes. Again, meron again silang limang success.
successive fundamental stages, merong apat na larval stage, yun nga po yung juvenile. Juvenile kasi ibig sabihin yan, bata eh. So, juvenile 1, 2, 3, and 4. And yung pinaka-final stage niya is yung ating mga adult. Also, take note, class, na hindi din naman po lahat din ng nematodes is diretsong egg po yung pinaproduce. Minsan, katulad nito, from the adults, embryogenesis happens papunta agad-agad sa larval stage or sa juvenile one. Meron po mga ganong parasite. But, commonly, ang ating mga nematodes, naglilay po sila ng eggs or ova hanggang sa mapunta dun sa mga larval stages natin. But, meron po mga exceptions to the rule na from adult ang nilalabas niya diretso is the larval stage at hindi po egg or ova. Okay, so that is the typical life cycle of our nematodes. Transmission. Transmission to a new host depends upon the following. Number one, the ingestion of the infective stage. So, dapat po kapag ang uh, isang mode of transmission niya daw is ingestion, dapat po class ang ma-ingest niyo is yung infective stage ni parasite. Okay, so di ba kasi since pinag-usapan na natin kanina na merong mga different stages si parasite or si nematode. So, para po kayo ay ma-infect ng isang parasite, if ang kanyang mode of transmission is through ingestion, dapat po yung mai-ingest nyo is the infective stage. Okay, so i-discuss natin yan isa-isa, no worries. Next, skin penetration can be a mode of transmission of the infective larval stages of the parasite. Also, the bite of an infected arthropods or insect. Ayan. I'm sure kung natatandaan nyo sa CPH, right, may mga pinag-usapan tayo doon, mga parasite na natatransmit through arthropods or yung mga insects natin, like mosquitoes, etc. Sunflies, yan. Also, another mode of transmission of our commonly encountered nematodes is inhalation po of the infective stage. Okay. So, mahalagang uh, tandaan nyo dito, class. Kasi isa-isahin naman natin yan. Ano lang naman to eh. Parang ito yung summary niya. Bago po kayo ma-infect ng isang parasite, dapat ang mode of transmission na dumapo sa'yo, nakain mo, nag-penetrate sa'yo, or nagkaroon ka ng uh, bite of the insect, or na-inhale mo, take note po na dapat ang pumasok sa katawan natin is the infective stage. Okay. Eh, well, what if po, kunwari, nakakain ako ng parasite? However, yung stage niya po is that not the infective stage. Magkakaroon po ba ako? The answer to that last is hindi po. Okay? So, dapat ang papasok sa katawan natin is the infective stage. Okay? Bago yan makakos ng sakit sa atin. Dapat infective stage siya. So, ang kikita nyo, iisa yung common denominator ng ating modes of transmission is yung infective stage. Dapat yung pumasok sa katawan natin. Lifespan of our nematodes. The lifespan of typical nematodes varies wherein some has a lifespan of a month or one month. Some may live for 12 months and there are also some which survive for at least 14 years. So, it really varies po depending on the nematode or the parasite. Kung gano'n po siya katagal na bubuhay. Okay? Meron naman dyan na mabilis mamatay Meron naman sobrang tagal at sobrang hirap gamutin kasi ano siya eh, very strong yung parasite na ito, especially this nematode. Pathogenicity. The effect of the parasitic nematodes upon the host depends upon the species. So, depende po ito kung anong klaseng parasite yung na-infect tayo. And location po ng parasite sa loob ng katawan natin. Meron kasi mga parasite na very dangerous kapag umabot siya dito sa certain organ na ito. So, it really varies kung ano yung mararamdaman mo. Again, depending on the species, kung anong parasite yon at yung location ng parasite sa ating katawan. Signs and symptoms. The signs and symptoms of roundworms infection include the following, but it is not limited to passage of worm by mouth, rectum, etc. So, baka nakakabalita kayo na sumuka daw ng uod, ganyan. So, that can actually happen. So, it depends. Maraming factors ang pwede nag-contribute doon. But it can definitely happen if yung burden or yung worm burden sa loob ng katawan ng isang pasyente is 
past na ng threshold na kaya ng katawan natin. Then, also, skin ulcers can be a sign and symptoms of a parasite, especially the roundworms. Worm eggs may also be passed in the feces. So, kapag kayo po ay tumingin ng tae under the microscope, pwede niyo po makita yung mga worm eggs or yung ova. Also, abdominal cramps, loss of appetite, diarrhea or constipation, flatulence, yung utot daw ng utot, weight loss, anemia, and etc. Maraming pong pwedeng signs and symptoms ang iba't ibang klaseng parasite, especially the nematodes. The habitat. The risk factors for roundworm infection include living in or visiting a warm tropical climate. So, parang nasa Pilipinas to, no, yung warm tropical climate. Ito kasi yung normal na climate here in the Philippines. So, medyo, ano, medyo prone tayo sa nematode infections just because of the climate. Also, to pa, hinighlight ko po itong poor sanitation. Madalas po ang ating mga nematodes is transferred or transmitted to, through fecal oral route. So, fecal oral, ayan, na-describe na natin yan, yung CPH. Yung fecal oral right is yung naka-ingest ka ng contaminated substance with feces. So, yun, nakain mo yung parang uh, particles ng dumi. And then, yung particles ng dumi na yun, nandun si parasite. O, ayun, nakain mo at na-infect ka ngayon ng ating mga nematodes. Also, poor personal hygiene, hindi lagi naguhugas ng kamay. Crowded conditions, like masyado kayo magkakadikit. May mga parasites po na ganyan na, ano lang, uh, magkaroon lang kayo ng contact with an infected individual, pwede na kayong mahawa. Then, ayan, crowded conditions such as daycare or institutional settings. Compromised immune system can also be a factor on how a roundworm can infect human. Malnutrition. Eating undercooked meat from carnivorous animals. Doon papasok plus yung trichinella. So, hindi mo na natin siya pag-uusapan. But, si trichinella is peralis po kanina, yung dinidiscuss natin kay small intestine adult. Um, mahuha, mahaha, pwede po kayo makakuha ng trichinella is peralis by eating undercooked meat. So, kung kayo po mahilig kayo sa mga steak na medium rare, mga ganun, Ingat po kayo because of the presence of trichinella esperalis. Kapag hindi po tama yung pagkakaluto ng ating meat, pwede po kayo ma-infect, no? Then, eating dirt or clay. So, sa edad naman na natin, siguro na to, no? Wala naman na sa atin siguro tong eating dirt or clay. So, siguro uh, maganda tong i-remind dun sa mga bata na kapag po sila ay naglalaro sa labas, yan, maghugas lagi ng kamay, then, ayun, kasi baka kasi madumi yung kamay nila, may parasite, eh, pwede sila ma-infect. Also, contact with animal feces and multiple insect bites. Kasi po, again, may mga nematodes po na ang mode of transmission is through insect bites po. Also, diagnosis. So, what is the possible uh, diagnostic test that we can perform to check for the presence of the parasite? So, in, it involves identifying the species of a worm causing the infection. If a worm passes through the mouth or the rectum, it should be brought to the physician for analysis and identification. So, kapag po kasi ang worm na yan, lumabas na po sa bibig, lalo na class sa bibig, it means talaga na very dangerous na po yung nangyayari. Hindi po normal na kung ang isang bata, meron siyang uod sa chan, hindi na po normal talaga yung lumabas na siya sa bibig. Minsan lumalabas pa yan sa tenga, sa mata, di ba? Mga ganong ano eh, uh, news. So, ingat-ingat po. Also, other steps in diagnosis may include, so ito po, tayo na yung mga gumagawa, mga medic, physical exam, stool and urine samples na test, blood test, muscle and or skin biopsy. So, pwede natin yung gawin to diagnose a certain uh, species of parasite. Ultrasound, x-ray, and tape test. All of these tests can be uh, a possible test to diagnose each or a specific type of nematode. Okay? So, hindi po lahat ng test na yan ay pwede sa lahat ng nematodes. No? May mga specific lang po tayo. Then, treatment po ng ating nematodes. So, for example, nagkaroon ka ng nematodes or roundworm. So, it's either through oral drugs po. So, may papainom sa inyong gamot. And also, through surgery for removal. Imagine, no? 
yung baka may mga nakikita kayong video sa Facebook yung may kinukuhang uod sa mata ganyan so pwedeng ano po yun uh, pwedeng nematode or roundworm po yung kinukuha nila sa mata nyo okay so pwede po ganyan through again oral drugs and through surgery kung hindi kaya ng gamot tanggalin si parasite o magsasurgery na tayo ngayon Okay, so another thing class na isa sa mga highlights ng ating buong uh, parasitology is the scientific and common names of the typical nematodes. Please take note class ha, may star po dito. Lagi pong may lumalabas sa board exam na what is the common name of this parasite, ganyan-ganyan. So, please take note of Ascaris lumbricoides. Ito po yung discuss natin later on. Ascaris lumbricoides, the common name of this is the giant intestinal roundworm. It is also known as the lumbricosteris and the inworm. I repeat, Ascaris lumbricoides. This is the scientific name of the parasite. The common name of this is the giant intestinal roundworm, the lumbricosteris, and the inworm. Then, ngayon, iisa-isahin natin yun sila, Enterobius, Tricura, etc. as the semester goes along. But for this video lecture, ito po yung focus natin, si Ascaris lumbricoides. Again, that is an otherwise known as the giant, intestinal roundworm, lumbricosteris, and the inworm. Yeah. Ito pa po yung mga ibang parasite na iisa-isahin natin. And these are the common nematodes. Please also do take note of the infective stage of our parasites. So, ang concern natin, right, is si Ascaris. Yun yung discuss natin together with this video. The Ascaris po, ang infective stage niya is the embryonated egg. I repeat, Ascaris, the infective stage is the embryonated egg. Please also do take note na meron tayong recall question here. Nandito si Star. What is the infective stage of the Tricuris that is also embryonated egg? And it is also same with your Enterobius. Then, ito po yung iba. Okay, so now let's discuss Ascaris lumbricoides. Again, the common name of the Ascaris lumbricoides is the giant intestinal roundworm. I repeat, Ascaris lumbricoides is otherwise known as the giant intestinal roundworm. Kaya po ito yung name niya, giant intestinal roundworm. Kasi typically po ang mga Ascaris po natin is malalaki po sila. So kung kayo po nakakabalita, ay yung bata meron daw ano, may uod daw sa chan. Commonly po class, kapag ganun po, especially here in the Philippines, the common parasite or nematode that infects children is the Ascaris lumbricoides. Okay? It is one of the most common. Signs and symptoms of the Ascaris lumbricoides is abdominal pain, masakit yung sa bandang chan. Pneumonitis. So this is something to do with the lungs. I'll explain this much further later on. Also, intestinal obstruction. So, what if kasi sobra-sobrang dami ng uh, number ng ating Ascaris? So, it can obstruct the intestines kapag sobrang dami. Na. So, these are just the common signs and symptoms of Ascaris lumbricoides. Please take note that the mode of transmission of Ascaris lumbricoides is mainly through ingestion of the or the fecal oral route. So, may na-ingest ka na dumi, yun. Pwede ka ma-infect ng Ascaris lumbricoides. Again, and infective stage po ng ating Ascaris lumbricoides is your embryonated egg. I repeat, the infective stage of Ascaris lumbricoides is the embryonated egg. While the diagnostic stage is the unfertilized egg, fertilized egg, tsaka adult. Uh, class, by the way. Pag sinabi po natin na nasa diagnostic stage na siya, ito po yung stage na nakikita natin under the microscope. Okay. So, under the microscope, po, po kasi tayo madalas mag-check uh, for the diagnosis eh. So, kung meron ba siya presence or absence nyo doon, kapag po nakakita kayo ng diagnostic stage, again, ang ibig niyang sabihin is ito po yung stage na kaya natin makita under the microscope or kung anumang test yung ginagawa natin. Okay? Again, the diagnostic stage of our Ascaris lumbricoides is your unfertilized egg. A fertilized egg pwede din and yung adult worms po natin can be seen under the microscope. Please also, also do take note of the species po ng dogs and cats, Ascaris, 
So, ito naman po, yung mga Ascaris po na present po sa dogs and cats natin. So, for the dogs po, we speci speci specifically have the parasite known as Toxocara canis. Ito po yung species ng Ascaris that can be found in the dogs. And in the cats po is otherwise known as Toxocara cati. Ito po yung species ng ating, again, Ascaris that is present in dogs and cats. And please take note, the Toxocara canis and Toxocara cati causes visceral larva migrants. Pakitake note po again, Toxocara canis and Toxocara cati causes visceral larva migrants. Okay, so now let's discuss the typical life cycle of Ascaris lumbricoides. So, ito po, makinig maigi. Para mas maintindihan natin, ma'am, ano ba yung mga fertilized egg, embryonated egg na sinasabi mo kanina? Okay. So, let's start here. May mga legends po tayo dito. Ito po yung number. Yan, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32,
Then after sa chan na pupunta na ngayon ulit sa small intestine at dun ulit matatagpuan yung adults and then the cycle just repeats. So, di ba? Very um, basic lang yung life cycle ng ating animal. Also class, please do take note as well aside from the life cycle po ha, ang structure or yung morphology po ng ating Ascaris ova or eggs. Ang ating pong Ascaris eggs has yung mammillated albuminous coat. So, ayan po, may para siyang wave sa labas na parang uh, protection. This is yung mammillated coat po na tinatawag. Okay? Pakitake note po class ng ova or egg without the mammillated coat, yung parang uh, wave-wave na yan, or yung coat na yan. If a parasite or if an ova of the Ascaris is without a mammillated coat, it is termed as decorticated egg. I repeat, ova, especially Ascaris ova without mammillated coat, is termed as decorticated egg. So again, ha, ova without the mammillated coat is termed as decorticated egg. So ganito po yung itsura niyan madalas under the microscope. So makikita nyo, di ba, para siyang may wave ng protection sa labas niya. Para siyang may coat, gano'n. But if ang parasite or ang ating Ascaris po is wala yung mammillated coat na yan, again, so yan, ay compare nyo. Oh. Diba dito, parang meron siyang mga wave-wave. Dito is pabilog lang siya talaga normally. So, this is decorticated egg po ang tawag siya. Pa-take note po ha, recall question po yan. Also, nematodes with heart lung migration class, ito po yung isa sa mga dangers ng pagkakaroon ng nematodes. May mga nematodes po tayo na kaya ng heart lung migration. Imagine in an adult worm, nagmamigrate po from the your heart to your lungs. So, dadaan siya dun sa daluyan ng ating uh, puso tsaka ng ating baga. So, that can be very, very dangerous once the parasite now commits heart lung migration. At ano pong nematodes ang kaya ang heart lung migration that is known as ASH? Si ASH po is si Ascaris lumbricoides, Strongyloides turcoralis, and hookworms po. All, the, all of these three can do heart lung migration. This is very, very dangerous. Kasi po, imagine ang isang worm, malaki po madalas, ang, lalo na yung Ascaris class, kaya nga giant intestinal roundworm siya, malalaki po yan. And what if this pa this parasite, especially the Ascaris, blocks the uh, yung parang sa daluyan ng ating heart sa lungs? Okay, so this is very dangerous. Also, please take note na since po this nematode is capable of heart lung migration, there can, therefore there can be there they can be found in the sputum. Kasi di ba si sputum po is nagagaling po sa lungs na. So definitely, since again. The nematodes ash, si Ascaris, Strongyloides, and hookworms is capable of heart lung migration. Therefore, all of these three parasites can be found in the sputum. Kasi nga po, again, si sputum po is coming from your lungs, actually. Okay, so going back to Ascaris din po ito, laboratory diagnosis for Ascaris lumbricoides is made by finding the eggs in the feces either fertilized or unfertilized also yung adult po pwede nyo rin makita by performing direct fecal smear so ito pong DFS or direct fecal smear this is the most common test performed in parasitology ito po yung titignan nyo siya under the microscope okay, yun po yung DFS or direct fecal smear then also you can try to do cathodic and cathocats or concentration techniques we will be discussing this much further po in the laboratory but for now, take note nyo na lang po muna na it is possible to diagnose Ascaris through cathotech, cathocats, or concentration techniques. And of course, the direct fecal Pwede din po tayo dito, ang Ascaris-specified antibodies can be detected through ser serological tests by Ascaris-specific peptides in the dot e enzyme immunoassays, a method with satisfactory sensitivity and specificity for helminth diagnosis. So, ito po kasi kay DFS, cathotate, tsaka cathocats, tsaka yung mga concentration technique. Ang specimen po mostly na ginagamit dito is feces or yung dume. Okay? So, meron po tayong other test pa for Ascaris. Uh, yung serological test nga po natin. Dito naman, class, ang ginagamit po dito madalas is blood. 
okay? But in the laboratory class, hindi po ito commonly performed. So, mga special test na kasi yan eh. Dito pa lang kasi class, kay direct fecal smear, kayang-kaya na po natin i-diagnose si pasyente ng Ascaris infection. So, bakit pa tayo gagawa ng ganitong test? Eh, mas mahal to. Eh, ito madali lang siya gawin and very cost-effective siya. Okay, treatment and prevention and control of Ascaris. So, treatment po natin here, we have the following drugs. So, we have piperazine, citrate, pyrantel tamoate, mebendazole, albendazole, and levamisole can be used to treat your Ascaris or Ascariasis. Piperazine and pyrantel pamoate are not used these days because these drugs can actually cause paralysis po. Again, pakitake note po ha, the piperazine and the pyrantel pamoate are no longer used these days due to side effect of paralysis. Prevention and control. Two methods of treatment for control used is mass treatment or selective treatment. Pag sinabi natin class na mass treatment is maramihang uh, mga tao ang ititreat natin in a specific area. Kaya siya mass treatment. And pag selective treatment naman is yung isa-isa lang. Ganun. Then for the preventive aspect, health education, sanitary disposal of human excreta, proper personal hygiene, refrain from using human excreta as fertilizer and thorough cooking of food is vital to prevent yung ating ascaris infection. Kasi, di ba, ano nga ba ulit ang main mode of transmission? Di ba, fecal oral route. So, with that, iwasan natin yung uh, exposure natin dun sa possible na feces that can contain the infective stage, mapeprevent natin ngayon yung ascaris. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or clarifications, you may contact me in this email.